Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is the Aberration Note read-through from Mei Yin. With news this week on both Arc 2 and an accompanying animated series that's based on the game, there's a huge renewed interest in the story of Arc, which we cover in full on this channel. In this mini series of videos we've been reading through all of the dossiers from the survivors intended to tell the story behind the arcs, and today we start our read through of Mei Yin Li, who we were first introduced to back on the island map. She's a Chinese warrior and her notes are themed in ancient poems and written in traditional Chinese. She appears to be from the Three Kingdoms era as she mentions references to the Yellow Turban Rebellion in her original notes. This was a popular rebellion that contributed to the end of the Han Dynasty and eventually gave rise to several warlords that divided the empire. The rebels all wore a yellow headscarf, which is what gave the uprising its name. Before we begin, don't forget I'm now on Twitter, and for those of you who are interested in keeping up with my upload and stream schedule, then drop me a follow at JamesCG12. Thank you. When last we caught up with Mei Ying, in the final notes from the island map, after knocking Helena out, she went to confront Nerva and seek her vengeance in the Starlight Sanctuary. Nerva, who had lost his whole army to the Overseer, was at his weakest, and she mentions a terminal in the command centre, and that Nerva was mortally wounded after taking a couple of blows from her sword. Mei Yin's notes begin where we left her on the island, and run parallel with Rockwell and Helena's notes on Scorched Earth. They act as a prequel to Elena's notes on Aberration. So as always, I hope you've got a cup of tea ready. If not, just pause this quickly and go and stick the kettle on. But I invite you to sit back, relax and enjoy part one of Mei Yin's notes on Aberration. Where have I been taken? When I pulled my sword from that machine, there was a bright flash and suddenly I was in this desolate place. Whatever that device was, I must have broken it. Nerva's corpse travelled with me blood still seeping from the wound I left in his chest. Despite what he has done, part of me thinks I should bury him. He was a tyrant, but he still died a warrior's death. For now, I will bandage the wound on my face and rest. It is night here, and it will be safer to explore in the light of day. I was fortunate today. The sun was rising as I finished bandaging my wounds. Had I not glanced at it, I would have never have seen Nerva's body. It was 300 paces away, right where I left it, and it was smouldering. The sunlight was burning it. I remembered a cave that I had spotted earlier and ran for it as fast as I could. My legs ached and smoke was rising from my armour by the time I arrived. Yet I was still alive, so now the sun's trying to kill me. Perhaps I was delirious, but I laughed at the notion. Monsters and armies have failed, so let the sun have its chance. I will defeat it too. Yesterday, I realised that I could rest no longer. I had no more spare cloth for bandages and had eaten nearly all the moss nearby. Rather than risk the heat of the sun on the surface, I ventured deeper into the caverns. It was a treacherous descent, but I'm glad I went. This cave is larger than I could have imagined. In fact, it's hardly a cave at all. A great forest flourishes down here. It's as if this whole land is backwards. However, there is one thing that's familiar to me. The air is thick with the sound and smell of wild beasts. I must remain on my guard. The light down here does not burn like the light on the surface, even the light that comes from the ceiling. I do not understand why, but I am glad for it. I was attacked by a pack of small monsters with spines on their backs. In another life they would have terrified me, but now I fear no beast. I slew many of them, but they kept appearing, even after killing the largest of them. They did not hesitate. Only when I neared a strange glowing pillar did they retreat. They seemed to fear the unusual light it emits. I should use that weakness against them. I finally removed the bandages from my face. While I avoided infection, the wound will surely scar. I do not mind, and neither does my new companion. In fact, I had just removed my bandages when I first saw him. From the branch of a great tree, he stared down at me with curious eyes. I stared back just as curiously. He looked almost like a young deer, but his fur was colourful and glowed like a fallen star. He reminded me of the paintings I'd seen of Kaelin, but he seemed too small. Whatever he is, he approached me so innocently that I could not leave him behind. So now he is Shao, my light in the dark. Navigating the forest has never been easier with Shao at my side. 
His light has both guided and protected me. The small spined monsters that I find before returned in numbers, but they cowered and fled before Shao's light, as they did from the glowing pillar. So as long as I have Shao with me, I need not fear them. Yet Shao's power is not endless. Well, if he does not periodically extinguish his light to rest, it will fade with time on its own. I must be careful when wandering into the darkest parts of the forest. At least Shao's light will go out and we will both be put at risk. Even with Shao's help, I can only do so much on foot. I need a reliable steed that can carry me swiftly through the forest and help me gather resources. Fortunately, I may have found such a beast. The other night, I heard many howls in the distance. When I investigated, I found a pack of strange beasts that looked like hairless wolves. They are ugly, vicious creatures, but a perfect size for riding. For now, I shall stalk the pack. When one of the wolves is separated from the others, then I will knock it out with my arrows and claim it for my own. I have named my wolf Shy, for he is so black that he seems to swallow all the light around him. No beast can replace Wu Shui, but Shai is swift and fierce. Upon his back, I travel across the forest with ease. Yet I know that Shai alone is not enough. In these lands, the strong will dominate the weak, and they will try to destroy all those who do not submit. I am reminded of this every time my scar aches. To survive, I must grow stronger. It's time to rebuild my army. Yesterday, I stalked a giant shelled beast with large claws that it could use like hands. Though slow, it seemed strong. I decided it would be a good addition to my army, but before I could attempt to bring it down, something swooped down from the sky to attack it. It was a great lizard, but not like the ones I'd seen before. No, this beast was a true dragon, long of body with a furry mane. It used the feathers on its arms to ride the wind and it tore its prey's shell asunder with iron claws. When it had finished its meal, it scaled the cavern wall and became one with the shadows, vanishing entirely from sight. I have found my new prey. Soon, I shall command the might of a dragon. The dragon was more formidable than I expected. At first, Shai was able to dance around the beast while I riddled it with arrows, but I underestimated how far its feathered arms could take it. Its sudden leap left Shai's leg wounded and I was flung from the saddle. The crippled wolf did not last long after that. I only survived myself by taking to the trees. By the time the dragon succumbed to my knockout poison, his hide was full of arrows. I buried Shai where he fell. Though he did not serve me long, he did so loyally. Thanks to him, I possess the strength of a dragon. I am now the Beast Queen once more. Travelling through this cave is easy thanks to my dragon, who I have named Oyu. I discovered that the cave is even larger than I imagined. Beyond the forest, there are tunnels that lead further down into the earth, to a land of glistening water and plants that glow like Shao does. How far does it go? If I keep going, will I find an end of the world? I do not know, but I will press on. I cannot return home, or even to the island I came from. My enemy lies dead far behind me, and I have no friends or allies. I have no aim beyond simply surviving. So for now, all I can do is move forward. The beasts of this land grow stranger the deeper I go. Yesterday I was attacked by a swarm of flying demons with wraithing tentacles in place of hands. I think they were after Shao, where some monsters feared his light, these ones hungered for it. However, they were no match for Eiyu's fangs and my blade together. Still, I will keep Shao close and have him extinguish his light for now. I could not bear it if he came to harm. Of everyone I have met in these lands, only Shao has stayed by my side out of his own will. Even Wu Shui had to be laid low first. I suppose there was that woman from the island too, but she is gone. Besides, I struck her. I doubt we are friends. I am not alone in these caves after all. The footprints I found today belong to no beast. That much is certain. Yet if humans left those footprints, they move like no one I have ever seen. They are deep as though their feet hit the ground with great force, and they often have huge gaps between them. No man can leap that far, yet there are no beast tracks accompanying them. Perhaps if I move carefully, I can track and observe them. Whether they are friend or foe, I should learn more about them before I act. 
Where did I make my mistake? I moved in silence. I never once left the shadows, but somehow they saw me. I mounted AU in an instant, but somehow they caught up to me. Had we fought, the battle may have been difficult. There were only four of them and I had AU, but their weapons and armor glowed like moonlight and their movements were swift. I was about to strike first when one of them raised their hands and took off their helmet, revealing a human face and hair the color of sunset. She convinced her friends to lower their weapons, but even as I write, I keep one hand on mine. We may share a camp tonight, but I dare not sleep. The armored ones had many questions when they awoke. They were surprised that I had raised AU myself, and even more surprised that I would came from a different land of monsters. That seemed important to them. I asked questions too. They say their armor lets them see at night and move with such speed. I did not believe it until the orange-haired woman let me wear a helmet. With it I could see through darkness as though it had been bathed in green light, or see the red shadows of the distant creatures. It was like magic. They asked if I wanted to stay in their village for a time. I doubt I will stay long, but I want to see more of this magic. And that concludes part one of the Survivor Note read-through for Mei Ying on the Aberration map. We will be back at this time tomorrow if you're watching these go out live with part two and the conclusion of Mei Ying's story. Again, if you're new here or you haven't already, then consider subscribing for more art content from myself. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games, and I'll see you.